Reddit writing prompts. Patient 001569, time to wake up. The gentle computerized voice whispered in my ear. Every day was the same as the previous. We all woke up in a massive dormitory, walked in line to the appropriate motorized track that led us to another part of the building. Breakfast. Once the harsh buzzing alarm sounded off, all of us finished our meal. Mine was steak and eggs with orange slices. Once again, we stepped towards the main motorized track to take us to the energy section of the building. It was here that we were placed on treadmills. Feet pounding the mats created a thousand piece symphony. Everyone was forced to jog in order to provide energy to the rest of the building. Once our two hours was up, another shift came in. Then we had the showers, which were warm enough to feel comfortable and relaxing. They gave us 30 minutes to wash up, but most people finished up quick and hung out in the sauna or the lounge area. Then it was lunch, followed by more running for the rest of the day on the treadmills. We weren't allowed to talk, though I so desperately wanted to with my friend Harrison. We always chatted during breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It was a bummer because we spent most of the day running, but Harrison and I always spent our evenings together listening to the football games on the digital radios that were plugged into the wall. All we had to do was go to our designated station, wear the headphones, and enjoy the match. He was the only friend I had in the whole place. No one else seemed nearly as interested in sports. Everyone else was listening to whatever the latest long playing radio drama was, or whatever new music album came out from another part of the building. The next day, I woke up before the computerized voice went off. I thought I was still in a dream, because I could see the world in front of me for the first time in years. I rubbed my eyes and pinched myself repeatedly. Sure enough, I was awake. I laid in the top bunk in my bed and saw the message. Don't tell them you can see. It was accompanied by an arrow next to it. Following that arrow with my eyes, I saw another message down the dormitory with the exact same text again with an arrow pointing towards the exit of the dormitory. However, it was the opposite exit we normally went through to get breakfast. We were in a vast hall of bunk beds. I clambered down. Normally I was supposed to wait up for Harrison so we could get breakfast together, but I had to see where the arrows would lead me. Other people were slumping out of bed. The sight gave me shivers. They all had glazed over eyes that were completely white. No pupils or colors, just white holes. None of them said a word as I weaved through the zombies. Could they sense me? I followed the path to the other end, and the arrow pointed to a corner where I had to lay on my stomach in order to crawl through a tunnel. Being able to see the world made my chest sink. It was like living in a futuristic dystopian novel. Everyone wore the same gray outfit, performed the same task, without the ability to add variety to their lives, except for what they chose to listen to on the radio provided by the building. I shuddered. Is this the life I'd been living for so long? How come it feels so sad now? Crawling through the tunnel felt like forever, but I could still see the message painted on the steel floor periodically, as well as an arrow that confirmed I was going in the right direction. The other end, there was a jagged square of light that became brighter and wider until I reached the other side. The jaggedly drawn, don't tell them you can see, was covering the walls in a room of steel coating. I could tell that I had never been in here. There was only one other person in the room, standing on the other side wearing a lab coat. His back was towards me, and he was pressing buttons on some sort of device that was connected to the wall, like he was playing an arcade game. I tiptoed over to his side. Beads of sweat coated my forehead. And my hands started to tremble. Something was off. I wasn't supposed to be in here. Sure, the signs and the arrows led me to this room, but my life was in danger. The silence, the concentration of the scientist I was now six feet away from, and the whole vibe of the room disturbed my mental core. The scientist rotated his head and glared at me with yellow eyes and a haunting smile that curved all the way up to his ears. 
patient 001569. So happy you came. It's time to make you blind again. It was the same as the computerized voice I heard every morning. From his lab coat, he pulled a long hypodermic needle the size of a golf tee. Behind the scientist is a door. Behind the scientist is a door. Better yet, go back through the tunnel. Tell Harrison you can see. Or tell them all you can see.